Before the World Wide Web, people checked up on flights and fares by reaching out to either an airline ticket office or a travel agent. Modern travelers have the same alternatives, except they can visit airline websites and online travel agencies. Instead of brick and mortar varieties, 67% of American leisure travelers typically book their flights online. Simple as it may seem, the online booking process involves multiple steps and numerous interactions between various systems. So, how does flight booking unfold off screen? How flight booking works, the behind the scenes of the aviation industry. Step one, flight search. With an airline website, a flight search includes just two steps. The website checks a search request against the inventory data stored in the airline reservation system and returns the list of available options for a target city pair and date combination. Fast and easy, but what if passengers want to compare prices or have a complex itinerary that involves more than one carrier? Then they will obviously prefer to search flights via OTAs, such as Expedia, Orbitz, Travelocity, or Priceline. Similar to traditional agencies, OTAs mainly get the flight information from Global Distribution Systems, or GDSs. A GDS, in turn, uses three sources of information to find matching options. First, OAG, the Official Aviation Guide of Airways, or Innovata. Both are the official sources of flight schedules. The GDS sifts out these databases to spot flights that meet the search criteria. Second, ATPCO, or the Airline Tariff Publishing Company that consolidates data on airfares. Carriers cooperating with ATPCO can update their prices four times per day for domestic U.S. and Canada flights and once per day for international flights. Third, Airlines Reservation Systems. The GDS makes real-time queries to all carriers that operate selected flights to check the availability of seats. Based on schedules, fares, and availability, the GDS creates offers and sends them back to the OTA, which displays them to a passenger. Additionally, OTAs may have exclusive agreements with airlines that allow them to sell tickets on more favorable terms. To maximize revenue, OTAs have to leverage their business interests and customer needs. They use smart booking engines to filter and prioritize airfare deals that will bring them the most value. In addition to OTAs, passengers have one more option, meta search engines like Skyscanner or Google Flights. Meta search engines extract information relevant to a passenger's query from numerous OTAs and airline websites. This way, they extend the coverage of flight deals and thus raise the chances of passengers to snap up the cheapest tickets. Neither Google Flights nor other meta search engines sell tickets. They make money when somebody clicks on a result and goes to a service provider page, for example, Expedia or an airline website. Once the needed fares are found, travelers have to choose whether to book tickets via the OTA or directly via the airline website. Step two, choosing a booking channel, an airline website or OTA. The majority of travelers prefer to book flights directly with airlines, even if they have found a relevant option on the OTA platform. And there's a reason for that. The most important consideration is the ease of change. If a ticket is bought via an OTA, passengers will likely have a tough time making any adjustments or initiating cancellation. Additionally, booking directly with airlines, travelers can buy different ancillaries, excess baggage options, in-flight meal, extra legroom, or the ability to reserve the best seats. Meanwhile, let's see what's happening next in the booking process. Step three, booking a flight and generating a PNR. While booking a flight, the website collects personal data to create a PNR, passenger name record. Depending on the carrier, the record can contain up to 999 elements, but only five of them are mandatory. Passenger's name, flight itinerary, passenger's contact info, phone, email, ticketing, the date the ticket will be issued, and the received from element, or the last person who made changes in the PNR. When the PNR is first created, in most cases, it will be the passenger's name. If the booking is made by an OTA website, it sends all PNR information to the GDS, which redirects it to the airline. Once the airline receives all mandatory details, it generates a record locator, a unique six-character code. Over time, other data will be added to the PNR. For example, a traveler books a hotel room via the same OTA or buys in-flight food via the airline's website. All this information may be reflected in the passenger record. Step four, payment processing. 
Among other elements, the PNR will typically include means of payment, of course only if the passenger eventually buys the trip. For financial operations, OTAs and airline websites use payment gateways, third-party services that offer various payment methods and guarantee the safety of transactions. Payment processing via an OTA typically takes longer than via direct channels because before finalizing the transaction, the OTA has to make sure that the tickets are still available. It sends a query to the airline reservation system via GDS channels. Only on receiving a positive response can the travel agency complete the transaction. Upon payment, a traveler gets a flight itinerary and PNR number by email, but they are not enough to board the plane. For that, a passenger needs a ticket. Step 5. Ticketing Booking and ticketing are separate processes. Though OTAs and low-cost carriers often require immediate payment for the flight, in any case, there is still a time lag between the booking confirmation and the ticket issuing. It usually takes up to three working days to verify credit card details and finalize money transmission. After the payment is confirmed, the airline's ticketing system issues an e-ticket, an individual electronic receipt linked to the PNR. Its record is stored in the airline reservation system. If the flight was sold by the OTA, it issues a ticket through the GDS with a copy redirected to the airline reservation system. E-tickets are also sent via email by the airline or OTA. If for some reason the booking can't be ticketed, the travel supplier has to offer an alternative flight or pay a full refund. Step 6. Departure Strictly speaking, this element goes far beyond the booking process, but we want to make sure that passengers get on board the plane without a hitch, and it depends on the correct work of another crucial technology the Airlines Departure Control System, or DCS. The DCS is integrated with the airline reservation system, the airport's IT infrastructure, and all check-in touchpoints, including self-check-in kiosks, the airline's mobile and web apps. It sees after passengers and their baggage from check-in to boarding. Which steps does it control in particular? First, check-in. Today, most airlines allow for online check-in. The service is usually available within 24 hours and 90 minutes before the flight, but it varies from carrier to carrier. For example, Ryanair opens online check-in 60 days prior to a scheduled flight. As a rule, the process involves entering a passenger's name, PNR, and an e-ticket number. If the seat was not reserved during earlier steps, the system will offer to choose one now. Otherwise, it will assign the seat randomly. After the check-in, the departure control system generates a boarding pass that finally entitles passengers to get on a plane. It contains a QR code that works as a unique link to the traveler's flight information. The airline's departure control system generates out bag tags with 10-digit numeric codes, also represented as a barcode. The airport's baggage handling system scans these barcodes to sort and track baggage. At the same time, the codes appear in IATA's baggage tracking system, called World Tracer. It helps passengers track their baggage. Finally, it's time to say farewell. At the boarding gate, passengers show their boarding passes, either printed or mobile version, and sometimes IDs. The departure control system will change the PNR status to boarded, and finally, to flown. What will happen next? To get more repeat customers, the airline, or OTA, will lure passengers into the next flight with deals and recommendations. So this process will be replicated again and again.